we'll move on, and um, our next presenter is Nogwane Lembeu, who is a social worker and a senior program manager at Pilani, um, and works in the maternal um, child health and nutrition program. And Nokwanele will give us um, an overview of their uh, mentor mother model. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. It's always a challenge to speak after well, good speakers like Tanya and Cindy. <laughs> so I'm going to try to give you um, an overview of what we are doing at Pilani Maternal Health and Child Health Program. Uh, my name is Nogwanele, so it means enough. I'm number six. <laughs> Actually, I'm number seven of eight daughters. So my dad was tired of girls. He wanted more boys. So I'm working at Pilani. We are doing a mentor mother program. I'm going to call it a mentor mother program slash community health worker program because I want you to, to look at it as the current community health worker solution. Uh, we have 120 community health workers, mentor mothers in Cape Town. We have 75 in the Eastern Cape in OR Tambo district near Coffee Bay and Zitulele Hospital. Uh, our mentor mothers are, are trained and they have a demarcated area where uh, in Cape Town is, it's about 250 households. In the Eastern Cape, it's, Eastern Cape is 250 households. In Cape Town, is 500 households because of density, and they have their allocated geographical area. They go in every house and knock and weigh every child from zero to six years, and they identify every pregnant woman in those houses. They also identify every home-based care client in those houses. So we believe that. Families should be treated with dignity and they should have one person serving them. So we, I want to say that, starting to talk about this, that we've made a lot of mistakes and we've learned a lot of lessons. And we feel that the lessons that we have learned, that we are still learning, we need to share with everybody that is trying to have a community health worker that is effective in this country. We have come into five things that we feel that are non-negotiables. For you to have an effective community health worker anywhere, you need to make sure that you first you recruit and select correctly. So recruitment, careful recruitment and selection, we feel that that is the first pillar. Why do we feel that? Because we look at the women that we are recruiting, we identify their coping mechanisms so that they can be able to go out and share first their coping mechanism before they are compared to professionals. Because their coping mechanism is the key to the home that they are going to serve. If you would ask me what are the coping mechanisms that we are looking for, a person who has managed to exclusively breastfeed for six months has a natural coping mechanism. A person who understands the importance of care, that person has a coping mechanism. A person who reacts on health of the child, take the child's sick care on time, has a coping mechanism. A person who has a structure in her day. Here, I think it's, this wall is full of educated people. You can agree with me. If you don't have a structure, you don't have outcomes in your life. So there are mothers out there who have a structure. What would be a structure of a mother? To wake up on time, to know the feeding time, to know the cleaning time, to know everything so that that child is not fed every five hours. A person who understands the importance of education, 
Because if you understand the importance of education, it means that you won't relax when your children are not in a good school. And you won't be able to compromise your children, not take them to school. So for us, those are a coping mechanism. And a person who has a routine in her life and understand also that the children are important and take care of them. A person who's dignified and the community helps us to identify this person. Minimum standard of education is also important so that you can be able to read and write in English, but the important thing is to understand your own language. So this person also does not have to drink. So you cannot own a shibin and be a community health worker. We've seen that in OR Tambo for the community health workers that are employed by government. Then you cannot have any outcomes because we know how alcohol contributes into our health. So what is the second uh, pillar that we think it's important? Training. There's training everywhere. Oh, have I two, two minutes? There's training everywhere, but there needs to be a behavior change uh, linked to training. So our training is more behavior change. Are you able to, to change your own behavior during training? Are you able to effect in anyone in your life? Do you have respect? Are you listening? There are so many people that are missed in the health system because people do not, have to, do not listen to the clients. Do you understand the situation of the client at home? Can you meet her on halfway? So our training is four weeks in class and six weeks in the field so that a person can be able to see, am I taking this job knowing what I'm getting myself into? And also after that, after they've worked for six months in the field, have mastered the weighing and plotting and rehabilitation of children at home and picking up pregnant women, they are trained on mental health, they are trained on ECD, they are trained on many other things that my colleague that is after me will add. So that duration of the training is six, six weeks, but after that there's continuous training after people have, have ma mastered their work. But what is most important, we say to our mental mothers, plan, be prepared, act, and evaluate your actions. So all the time that is a process. And it also trained them that, to understand that change is slow, is done in a relationship. It is very slow. It can be done in steps so that we can be able to achieve. The third pillar is action-orientated intervention. I saw here that our community health workers are used as a referral system and assessment. We need to expect them to intervene in the home. There is intervention that happens. I'm not a handout person. That is why I was asking my colleague from KwaZulu Natal, what are the sustainable issues that one can bring into the home? Because once you give handouts, it's a very easy intervention to do, and then you forget about that person. But if you are taking the difficult part of intervening, something has to change in a home when you get into a home as a health worker. What changes? I just want to show, tell you a story of one client that I had in Guyasa. This client was HIV positive with a disabled child who was five years, disabled HIV positive child. The client was defaulting treatment herself. She was six months pregnant. How many clients are there, nurses? Many clients within that household. We took that client by hand because she was living under abuse in the home took her to the clinic, we thought that the clinic manager was going to be very excited to have this client because it's booking, antenatal care, defaulter, and the child defaulting treatment. What did we get? We stayed for the whole day in Guyasa without being helped. But the next day we went, the doctor who saw us said, thank you community health workers. That's the attitude we need from every professional. Please work with us. So this client, because she was living under abuse, she wanted to leave her husband. That doctor helped us, he did transfers, he gave the treatment to all these three clients of ours. We took her, we gave her money, we took her to the bus, she called us the next week and said, I'm safe home and I'm back to the clinic and I'm with my family. That's action oriented intervention. But this work cannot be done without supervision and support. That brings us to the fourth pillar. 
team leaders that are sitting in the clinics, and they are called team leaders that are working with community health workers. Let's not do it this way. It's wrong. Team leaders need to be dirty, their feet and their hands in the community. We have professional nurses that are going out for five days, be it raining, sunshine, windy, they are out in the field. But they have cars, government of South Africa. We provide cars to them. You cannot expect a professional nurse to work with a community health worker. Allocate a car to that professional nurse so that the professional nurse can be out in the field daily. We see real poverty. In the clinics, we, you don't see it. We see it head on. We see it head on. We see things that you don't even imagine that are existing in this country because we go into homes. And when we go into your clinics with these clients, a little bit washed, make sure that you cooperate with us. So without supervision, without continuous supervision, a community health worker is useless. Community health workers are so clever, they do your 120 visits in one day, and they sit in their homes. Without supervision, this program is, is dead. It is dead. But also with super, this, what I like about supervision, if a professional nurse undresses a child who has pneumonia, now I'm coming to the community health workers being able to detect and identify issues that are of uh, priority. If you undress a child in front of me that has pneumonia and you show me this and that and that and that are signs of pneumonia and you rush this child to the clinic and the clinic picks this child with two hands and rush this child to another tertiary hospital, that is painted in my mind for the rest of my life. It means to me, it means this is an urgent issue. I will never leave it in any day, even when I'm working alone. Uh, also, the last one uh, pillar that I, I don't like it, but I, I, I'm learning to love it. It's called <laughs> uh, M&E. <laughs> I feel it is a slang. I feel it is for educated people. I feel that is going to make us forget what we are there for. But I like it in the sense that it is performance feedback to me as a community health worker. If I have 100 pregnant women, and believe it, we have our community health workers have 100 pregnant women in their caseloads. They have folders. If I have 150 of them are HIV positive, and I know the whole 50 is on treatment, I say to myself, I've met the target. So I'm able to tell my boss that this is my work. No one can come and say, I'm not performing. So we have clear targets for our mental mothers. They meet the targets. We have clear outcomes. If you take a community health worker in fives and you say, go into ho this home, they will not be able to be effective. But if you give them targets and you hold them accountable, they will be able to be happy. But this last thing I want to talk about is the tools. You know, I worked with the community health workers uh, in 2002 of this province. They had this IMCI forms. Some of those forms, if you look at them, they were like upside down because they didn't mean anything to them. But if you have folders as a community health worker, you have something. But give them tools. Without a scale, how do I detect malnutrition? You know, without a thermometer, how, how do I detect, you know, temperature? You know, without everything that is needed out there, how do I function? Please make sure that you use community health workers in a way that is effective. There is a lot of potential in this cater, and please respect them. <laughs>